Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Mtoto News Insight, this week brought to you by Omar Hamid. But before we get to the news stories, let's get our headlines today. Kenyan schools set to reopen in January 2021. COVID-19 spikes child trafficking cases. Police on the spot over failure to arrest man accused of defilement. The Ministry of Education asked school heads to get data on pregnant girls. Did you know that one in six girls in Kenya experiences child violence before the age of 18 years? Onto our first news story. Did you know that one in six girls in Kenya experiences child violence before 18 years? A report detailing the situation of violence against children in Kenya has revealed that at least 15% of females and 6% of males aged between the age of 18 years and 24 years experienced violence before the age of 18. The Violence Against Children Survey Report 2019, conducted by the Children's Services Department in the Ministry of Labor, revealed that for both males and females, intimate partners in brackets current or previous spouses, boyfriends and girlfriends, or romantic partners were the most common perpetrators of childhood sexual violence comprising of 44% of the first incidents. The report launched by the Ministry of Labour and Social Protection on July 16, 2020 was presided over by the Labour Cabinet Secretary Honorable Simon Chelugui. It also indicates that nearly one in six females aged between the age of 18 and 24 years who experienced childhood sexual violence. The perpetrator of the first incident was a classmate or schoolmate. Furthermore, among, fa among females aged between the age of 18 and 24 years who experienced any sexual violence in childhood, more than one-third indicated the perpetrator of the first incident was at least five years older. Using violence against children is indeed possible and our country has been making progress in the right direction. However, the overall prevalence is still too high and it is important to note that some of the form of recent sexual violence experienced by girls aged 13 to 17 has increased from 2010 to 2019, which is concerning. More particularly what the, ambassador, the US ambassador to Kenya has mentioned, and I think we all know recently there were media reports of a increased uh, number of girls uh, who, are, who got pregnant, especially during the current um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, where schools have closed, children are at home. I also wish to highlight the violence children experience in homes was found to be high, where children are exposed to physical violence, emotional violence, uh, violent discipline by their parents, caregivers or other adult uh, relatives and I think this one is very important and I want to speak to Kenyan parents our children are a gift from God and we should endeavor to protect and care for them findings from the report 45.9 percent of female experience childhood violence 45.9 percent almost half of all girls experience childhood violence. 56.5 percent of males experience childhood violence. Over 50 percent of males. Physical violence is the most common type of violence experienced in childhood with 38.8 percent of females and 51.9 percent of males being victims. Who are the perpetrators? 28.9 percent of female and 37.9 of male cited parents, caregivers and adult relatives to the perpetrators of violence. 30.9% of female and 31% of male also cited childhood emotional violence by peers. What is the level of disclosures of this violence? 41.3% of female reported sexual violence to someone else and 41% of female and 39.2% of males reported physical violence to someone else. 
In terms of service seeking or refuge or reporting, one third of youth knew where to report sexual violence, only 33%. However, among the female, only 12.5% sought service and only 10.7% received service successfully. For female, for male, only 3.2% sought and got service successfully. For both male and female, only 1 in 10 sought service against physical violence and only for female 7.2% and male 6.4% received service after reporting physical violence. The Ministry of Education has ordered head teachers back to work and asked them to start collecting data on schoolgirls who have become pregnant during the COVID-19 pandemic. The directive has caused confusion among teachers as it is not clear how it will be implemented. Schools remain closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. In the circular issued by the basic education PS Belio Kipsang, the heads are required to work closely with the Ministry of Interior and, Coordinate, and Coordination of National Government and the Ministry of Health to get full information on the identity and location of the pregnant schoolgirls. The principals and head teachers are required to forward the information to ministry headquarters by July 23rd. Police in Siaya County are on the spot after it emerged that they have not taken any action on a primary school teacher alleged to have repeatedly defiled an 11-year-old grade 4 pupil in Sigomere a month ago. The victim's aunt reportedly caught the teacher in the act and reported, and reported the matter at Sigomere police station. The victim claimed that she was fetching fire in a nearby bush when the, when the suspect pinned her down and defiled her. Medical records from Sigomere sub-county hospital where the girl was treated showed that she was defiled. The girl's father is mentally challenged and her mother quit the marriage and left behind four children. Her relative said, at the center of Saga is, is the suspect's re relative who is a civil servant and is said to have a hand in alleged cover-up. On to other stories. Kenyan schools are set to reopen in January 2021 amidst the, the COVID-19 pandemic, says the education CS Magoha. The academic calendar 2020 was cancelled as well as the national examinations for both primary and secondary schools in attempt to contain the rapid increase of the COVID-19 cases in the country. Stakeholders have shelved the, the initial proposal to reopen basic education learning institutions in September for standard 8 and for 4 candidate classes because of the following reasons. Number one. There will be two Form 1 classes in 2021 academic year. The country will experience very severe equity challenges, which may be constitutional in nature, when only two basic education classes reopen and transition while all the other children lose the year. Although the 2020 Form 4 cohort will have left, the total number of candidates in Form 4 is 752,000, as compared to approximately 1.2 million in Standard 8, which would mean then that even if we had the intention of using the space left by Form 4, we would be having a deficit of in excess of 438,000. Therefore, it shall be difficult. In fact, not difficult, it will be impossible to achieve social distancing. And even social distancing apart, we shall be unable to have physical classrooms for this huge number. Four, all learners in grade one to four, standards five to seven, and form one to three in 2020, will remain in the current classes in 2021. Therefore, there will be no KCP examinations in 2021, in the later part of 2021 because the students in standard 7 and form 3 would it will be practically impossible for them to cover the syllabus uh, of five terms within one year coronavirus has been in kenya for five months now children have been away from school and very active at home with a plenty of time in their hands 
Unfortunately, the risk of child online sexual exploitation and child trafficking is on the rise. Globally, millions of children are trafficked for cheap labor, sexual exploitation, domestic work, and street begging. Governments, non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, and community members have a role to play to stop child trafficking. We need to make ourselves aware, be alert, and report such cases. Children have the right to enjoy a childhood free from violence. That's all I had for you today, but don't go away yet. We have more information about the coronavirus pandemic done by my friend Karen Mwikoma. But as for me, I say goodbye. Hello friends. I know most of you have probably had many studies about coronavirus and on the issue of flattening the curve. But do you know what the curve is? This is the curve. This is the time since we had our first case and this is the number of cases we've had. Well, flattening the curve means reducing the number of people who get coronavirus over a long period of time. So, we, by flattening the curve, we mean reducing the number of people who get coronavirus over a long period of time to give doctors enough time to treat sick people and reduce the number of people dying. Now that you know what flattening, flattening the curve is, my name is Karen Rikoma and always remember to sanitize, wash your hands, stay at home and wear your mask in public places and keep social distance and as this is the only way to flatten the curve. Bye!